This video is going to discuss the Season 22 Artifact Mods preview and my thoughts on it going forward for the meta for next season. The perspective, everything I say is the perspective on the solo GM environment or, end, or solo end game content. Uh, my perspective isn't a PvP outlook, it's not even necessarily a raid outlook. It's more so like dungeons slash Grandmaster Nightfalls and maybe even exotic missions depending on how they work out, that type of content. So they've released what all the mods are going to be for the artifact, so I'm just going to go through each one. Mainly the focus of the video is the first column. The rest of the columns I'll briefly touch on and just tell you my thoughts on them as they come up. But mainly it's just to go through each mod, the pros and cons to why it's bad or good, and the suggestions for each mod as I go through it. So the first column has Antibiot Auto, Peace and Bowstring, Unstoppable Scout Rifle, Overload Hand Cannon, Unstoppable Fusion. So first and foremost, Antibiot Auto Rifle. The reason why this is a bad mod overall is because for the solo GM environment right now, the meta is to use an exotic primary to stun barrier champions. For example, Wish Ender. Wish Ender is overwhelmingly the best weapon in the game for GM Nightfalls because he can one-shot GM adds from a safe location and it can one shot a barrier shield as can arbalist but which end i argue is even better than arbalist because it's infinite ammo and it does what arbalist does for a longer period of time it's better but <clears throat> if one second we just remember we just say right that doesn't exist which ender then what would you use as an anti-barrier auto if you did my first thing that comes to my mind is monte carlo as a fort the reason being is because they are making a catalyst for Monte Carlo. This is why they have given us anti-barrier auto. Read between the lines. You can learn a lot from what they just use in their IFAC mods before the season comes out. So it's obvious. They've put anti-barrier auto there because they want you to use Monte Carlo in endgame next season. That is definitely, it's not just RNG. They didn't just put the mods in a, in a little hat and, and, and pick out the names of the, out the hat. And say, oh, we've got Antibody Auto again. No, they've done that, obviously, for you to use Monte Carlo. They want you to use it. Now then, Monte Carlo, I've just showcased that in a solo GM. So you saw what it was like. And it does a decent job. It does suffer from range drop-off. With a 50 range stat, as of now, it's suffering from it. But to be honest with you, all auto rifles suffer from this. Because of how the identity of an auto rifle in Destiny 2 is meant to be really... A medium to short range weapon and in a so in a solo gm environment sometimes you need to fight 30 meters plus and that's where the auto rifles start to suffer especially on console even on pc they do as well they're just maybe a little bit more stable on pc but they'll still suffer from the same issues so i can't tell you really how good monte carlo is going to be until the catalyst comes out comes out it's going to give you a glaive option to be honest with you in in low end to mid content the glaive's going to be handy, but in GM environment, it's not going to be that handy unless it comes with a shield that the standard glaives come with, which I highly doubt they're going to give you a shield as well with the weapon. If they do, I'll be shocked. I will be shocked if you can actually do that, but I don't think so. I think it's just going to act as like a little mini glaive. So if that's the case, then it's going to be all right. On certain builds, it'll be fantastic. Like I've told you, the Warlock with the melee range damage you can do. With like ball lightning, celestial fire, stuff like that. You can add that poison damage to the your element, and it's it's going to give you damage over time with necrotic grips, right? So there's a build there, but we have to see. All right, but make no mistake, Monte Carlo is nowhere near the same caliber as Wish Ender. And I'll just leave it at that. So other things that I thought about when I thought about. Uh, and I, buy all, I thought about sweet business. You've saw me use this in the past with Titan, Actium, War Rig, but that's just that build. You use sweet business without that chest plate or, with, or, on a hunter, or a warlock, its power level goes down. It's not that useful. They did buff it. It has a sort of kinetic tremors type perk to it, but it really isn't going to do better than some of our rifles unless you use that particular build that I stated, which is really good on a Titan. Moving on, the last, the next thing I thought was Quicksilver Storm. So we're going to be able to use that still, because we've been using it this season, we're going to be using it next season, 
So I've already made a video about this, but the, the kinetic version of the gun does 10% more damage than the strand version of the gun. The strand version is the catalyst version, so what you need to do is pull out two Quicksilver Storms, one with catalyst, one without, and infuse both. You ideally want to use the kinetic version because that's more powerful than the strand version. Although you make more tangles with the strand version, and there's something to be said about that because there's going to be some builds surrounding tangles. So you might not want to do that. It depends on how that's going to um, transpire. And I don't know the answer to the question because I can't tell the future. But I do think you need a kinetic uh, Quicksilver Storm like I do have. Right, sticking to exotic aura rifles. Well, what I've got in my vault is Centrifuge. Now, Centrifuge is a decent aura rifle at Agclear. But to be honest with you, using it on a barrier isn't that good. So the job of this auto rifle, when you've got anti-barrier auto on, is to really stun a barrier. So I'm judging it on that, and centrifuge just does not do a good job at that. It's just like any other 450 RPM auto. It's actually worse because I've actually used my exotic slot, which means that, right, I've used an exotic slot up on something that's not adding much value, where a standard legendary auto would have done done the job if not better actually a lot better because i've got some good energy auto rifles with some good champion barrier mod uh, perks on there so i don't recommend centrifuge and i've used it enough now this season to realize it's not that good of a weapon it's a novelty weapon it's a cool fun weapon but the fact that you need to keep moving round and round and you can't sit behind cover you are penalized for sitting behind cover in solar geo environment you need to you need to use your cover and this weapon says no i don't want you using cover i want you running around like a madman you do that you get yourself killed it's not a good weapon although i do like the design of the weapon so that's a big no so now we move on to oh there's another exotic oh, hard light hard light was fantastic back in the day when match game was in the game where you had to match a shield that's no longer the case so the power of hard light has gone down although i will say Using the weapon when you stun enemies and stuff because of its exotic perk, it does feel nice to use. But again, I don't think I would recommend using hard light in this in, in next season's meta. It's there, hard light's fantastic weapon, but it's not really gonna do much for you to be honest. Right, so moving on to auto rifles, kinetic and energy, legendary ones. So I'm not gonna go through every role, I'm just gonna pick out a couple. The standout kinetic art rifles to me that I use and I keep in my vault, Braytech Werewolf. The reason being is because it's got four times the charm, Vopper Weapon. Vopper Weapon adds 20% extra damage to uh, champions and stuff and bosses and, that, and, and stuff like that. So that's going to break a shield quicker. But not only that, look at its range start, 81. It's a 450 RPM auto. Now, to understand auto rifles, you need to understand what auto rifles are good in GMs. Now, this question won't crop up, will it? Because it's like, well, why would I know the answer to that question? I'm barely using art rifles in Endgame. Quite right. But there has been times in the past where we've had to use a art rifle to stun a champ. The last time I can remember was like Proven Grounds. I was struggling to stun champions because it was barrier auto. I don't think Wish Ender was a thing then. It wasn't at the time. And I had to stick with like a solo high impact auto. The lower the rate of the fire for the art rifle, the better it is in endgame content because it can stun a barrier shield from a longer distance, and that is very important. So the higher the the higher the range down your auto, the far more consistent it will be at stunning a shield. So you want to stay away from anything above 600 RPM autos at a big no-no in GMs. They're good on planets, they're good in lost sectors, but they're no good in GMs. They are far less consistent. It makes you have to play harder as a player to get that shield break and you don't want that the Braytech werewolf is a high recommendation you can pull it from collections i believe as well i don't know what role you get on it but you can pull it from collections if you've had it in the past moving on so we've got lord brock dash c this is a high impact frame or literally the highest stat ranges you can get 98 range this one has with four times a charm target lock target lock is really good on fast fire rate weapons because you get that target lock Right, and it's just going to improve your damage as you're breaking the shield. Sort of like uh, it would be sort of working like adaptive munitions, but in a different way. Fantastic auto rifle. I recommend you look at your rolls for this weapon and keep a good one. I've even got another one with perpetual motion target lock. 
which you all know how I love perpetual motion, but that's um, a video for another day. But that's another good role. Um, Old Sterling's a fantastic, or oh, the problem with Old Sterling is that it's a strand weapon. Now, strand and stasis weapons receive a 10% negative to damage as opposed to kinetics. Kinetics have 10% more damage, just like the, the, the um, Quicksilver Storm situation. So, Old Sterling, to understand Old Sterling, it is a scare flock auto rifle. It's got the same gun model, right? So, if I go to scare flock, which I'm looking for now, here we go. So it's the same gun model, same stats, nearly identical. Just depends on the barrels that you get. But I would recommend Scavelock over Old Sterling because um, it's got a 10% damage bonus to start without even factoring in perks. Now my my role is a utility role. It's got osmosis, subsistence, which osmosis is fantastic in GMs because it means you can tap into a surge without otherwise being able to. Now I know like overcharged weapons are going to, do that anyways but it is just kind of nice osmosis has went down in power if i'm being honest since lightfall which has annoyed me because i used to keep a lot of osmosis weapons but scare flock just using the gun like you, if anyone knows what, about what i mean about using scare flock it's a fantastic versatile weapon to use it's good 600 rpm as well it's it's a medium balanced weapon fantastic gun to use i recommend you look at your rolls for that gun all right, so over all rifles, um, duty bound. I don't really recommend it, but I have got a fantastic roll, triple tap bauble, twenty percent damage bonus. I don't really like the recoil direction on the weapon. You can see the recoil of it. I hate the way it feels, but you can get an adept variant of it and stuff. I've got perpetual motion frenzy, so I've got some good rolls on it. I just don't like the gun that much. I'd, I'd sooner rather use like Bray Tech stuff like that, Lord Brock Dash C. Right, but you could use duty bound if you're a duty bound user, then you can use it. False promises, a fantastic aura rifle, very rare aura rifle, only gets sold by Zer and Gunsmith, I believe. I've got a 92 start range auto, fantastic. The problem is, I've got a bad roll. Although Overflow is giving me a larger mag, I think it puts it, I don't know what it puts it to, but it puts it to a really large mag. It's a really good gun, but I don't expect people to have it, so I'm not going to recommend it too much. Create, I tell you to not use the gun. Although it is good, CQC, close quarters. If you're operating in 10 to 20 meters, you're operating in a close quarters GM. I don't know, like birthplace of the vial or something. It's decent in that, right? But it's de it's not very good in, like, say, proven grounds, where you're having to fight from a bit of more of a range and stuff. So I don't recommend Create that much. And it's stasis, but I will say the weapon feels fantastic to use. It's just, it's a 720 RPM. It's not built to be a GM auto rifle. It just isn't, hasn't got the range stat and stuff. So I don't recommend it that much. Hero Dash C, it is a stasis auto rifle. So it's going to receive, it's going to be a worse version of Lord Brock Dash C, which is better. But I have kept the roll because it's got Frenzy, High Cal, and Shoot to Loot. Shoot to Loot's fantastic when you've been able to shoot ammo and orbs. So it's a good roll, but Lord Brock Dash C is slightly better because it's a kinetic weapon. Um, so yeah, seven server carbine. I've said about this in the past. Four times a charm, bore pull, a fantastic 450 RPM auto rifle, high caliber rounds. Check your rolls. This is a fantastic gun. I highly recommend it. Um, the last breath, check your rolls for that because this is also a good, feels a bit like Scareflock just with a different gun model. Demo Frenzy, fantastic gun. That's why I'm keeping it. Tiger Spite. Also, another good R rifle is from the Dream and City. Quite rare. It's not rare, but people don't use it because it's sort of a really old gun. But I do recommend it because it's got a really good high stat range for its archetype. Like this particular roll has, anyways, 84 stat range with Frenzy. Surplus not being a good perk to me, but the Frenzy and the range, it means it'll be a reliable, reliable kinetic R rifle. Moving on to energy R rifles. So I recommend come to pass. Because you can craft the gun. I've got adaptive munitions and Genesis. So when you Genesis will reload the weapon when you stun a barrier. Fantastic. Adaptive munitions will stun the barrier quicker. This is going to do so much work for you. Come to pass. Especially if it's Arc Surge. I recommend it. The same reason that Come to Pass is good. So is Armit AR2. It's just a solar variant. It's a 450 RPM. Though a slightly different RPM I believe. Yes it is. But it's going to do the same job. I've got triple top. Adaptive munitions. It is craftable as well. So have a look. 
There's no excuse with that. People can craft that gun. Don't put, don't make the mistake of putting incandescent on Army AR2. I see a lot of people doing that. You're making a mistake doing that. Get on adapter munitions. You can change the perk anyways, can't you, with the crafting tools that we have. Sweet Sorrow, fantastic gun. It's got, well, it... It is a 720 RPM, but it doesn't feel like one, if you know what I mean. It's strange, because I was using this in a GM, and it was doing really well. I think what it was is that because it had turnabout on, so when I do break a shield, I get an overshield. Now, imagine in a glassware solo GM when you're up against four barriers. Getting that overshield is clutch. It also has auto lone holsters, so when I stow it, do some heavy damage, then swap back to the weapon reloaded. So even though I've said 720 RPMs aren't that good, Sweet Sorrow is... Something that you want to look at because you can craft the range on it to so make bump its range up. I haven't actually fully spec'd it all. I've only just leveled it up. I haven't done that bit yet. Adic here, 720 RPM, class roll, but it, it, again, it, it, it's suffering from a poor range drop off. Old age old bond, 100 start range, kill clip, zen moment. Not a fantastic roll, but. This was the original roll I got years ago from Last Wish, which I've kept all these years. It's a high-impact frame auto. It's fantastic. One of the best art rifles in the game. You can actually craft the new one, I believe. Go ahead and go and craft the new one. I just haven't done that yet, but go ahead and do it. It's literally going to be a fantastic void. It's like It feels like a void machine gun. That's how good it is. I know it's not a machine gun, but it's just the way it fires and stuff's really good. I recommend it. Um, this gun here, um, the Mellow, I've got a lot of friends here on it. I actually used this gun to solo a Proven Grounds GM before Wish Ender came out with its intrinsic barrier and stuff. So you can imagine how good this weapon was for me at stunning barriers from a range, and it was needed. A high impact auto was needed for that solo GM that time. It really was. Um, so I, I don't forget stuff like that. It's a fantastic workhorse of a weapon when you need to fight from range to stun a barrier. Dark Decider, it's got auto lone holster vault shot. Not useful at all in end game content it's good on planets that's all it's good for nine hunger a fantastic uh, weapon i think we all remember the meta surrounding this gun in pvp and pve season of arrivals fantastic gun i've kept it ever since then i've got drop mag on it which you can't get on the gun anymore auto unholster demolitionist fantastic gun great for gms I, I may well be using it it's void as well and there's a void weapon based build Coming out with season 22, so non hunger is going to be also fantastic. Reckless Oracle 720 RPM, not that good, honestly. I've just got that gun because I have Shadow Price Adept. It's good that it's an Adept variant and it's a 450 RPM. Its stat range is a little higher, but look at its, look at my roll. My roll is poor, 64 stat range. I'm wanting at least 80 plus stat range, so. I would say that this is a poor weapon, and it's out of rotation. I think you can focus it, though. So you can have a look at some rules and stuff, but honestly, I'm not that uh, thrilled about this gun. It does have disruption break, though. If I just look on it, it does. So if I get a disruption break shadow price, I can pair that with Riverhod, and that is something that I will be looking at. But other than that, there's no other utility I can think about with the gun. And that's all the rifles covered. So you've learned from what I've said. Look at the higher, the lower rate of fire autos. They are better for anti-barrier auto. Now the next barrier capable weapon is bows. So if I go yet, yet again back to dim, pull up all my bows, and we talk about exotic bows first. So the first thing that springs to mind is Wish Ender. Wish Ender has intrinsic barrier in it, so it's going to be like that every season. And it's literally the go-to barrier breaking weapon for solo GMs, hands down. It also one-shots all, all GM ads. Miners, that is. It, it's the best pri exotic primary in the game, I'm afraid. But it is going to get stale, and if you're fed up of using Wish Ender, for whatever reason, then you can use alternative legendary bows. You can do. You've got Verglass Curve, which is a terrible weapon, in all honesty. I don't really want to talk about it too much, but I don't like the weapon. I just don't. And it's a stasis weapon, and you, you know, I have a bit of a distaste with some stasis and some strand weapons. Just because they intrinsically do less damage and, and all that. Just not that into the weapon. <clears throat> but moving on. Exotic energy bows. So Le Monarch is getting a buff next season. It's going to be. It is the go-to overload weapon at the minute for solo. Like 
Anytime there's overloads in a GM, most people will use La Manarque. It's just how it is. Um, it's just so consistent for single target damage, and it's so consistent for keeping overload stunt, a champion stunned. We've only got overload hand cannons, so if you're not comfortable using a hand cannon, people are going to gravitate to La Manarque even more. Trinity, uh, no, Tiku's Divination is a fantastic solo exotic bow, probably, probably my favourite solo bow in the game because of its auto tracking with its bow shots. It, it, granted, it's not very good at breaking a barrier, but it is possible to do it. I remember recently running it, well, maybe within the last 12 months, running it and it not doing very good on barriers, but it does so well at everything else. Like the shots you're doing in between a barrier, putting your shield up, you're doing a lot of damage with the hip fire, then you aim down sides. It's that explosive effect you get from it. So Tiku's Divination is fantastic. It's all the brother hierarchy of needs, though, needs help. It's not a very good weapon. It's too finicky. It's too niche. takes too much setting up. You've got to shoot through a damn ring. Like Here's the thing. In a solo GM environment, you can't always stand in the same place. You need to be able to move around. Hierarchy of needs restricts movement, therefore makes it a bad weapon overall. Its usability of the weapon is bad. However, it's good on paper. Just remember, we don't play the game on paper. You need to have the usability factor good of the weapon as well, and it just hasn't got it. So I don't recommend that. You would definitely use Tycho's Divination of a hierarchy of needs every time. Trinity Ghoul. Trinity Ghoul is good, but its power does get... They may slightly in in a GM environment. Only slightly though, because it's based on your kill streak and keeping that going, etc. But it's just not as good as Tiku's Divination or the Monarch in GM content. Trinity Girl's power is more in middle game content, strike scoring, um, medals and stuff, which is coming back to the game. So for strike scoring, it is the king. It is the best weapon in the game. But this video isn't based on me telling you what's the best meta for strike scoring because I couldn't care too much about that for this because everything's good at strike scoring depending on your strategies although Trinity Girl is better because you can keep the streak going so yes Trinity Girl is a good 8 out of 10 exotic but La Monarch Tiku's is superior to the weapon it'll be a hard pill to, for people to swallow but that is the truth of it so going on to legendary bows right so, really, there's only three or four, a handful, that I'm actually currently using. So, I'm using Fell Taradiddle. It is a craftable bow. It comes with Archer's Tempo Explosive Head. I've enhanced these perks as well from the past. I recommend that you do. It's a fantastic bow. You don't even have to do an enhanced. It's a lightweight frame bow, which is favorable as well. You can spec it for higher accuracy than intended because you can craft and stuff and get all the right stuff going on it. I've made videos in the past about how to do that. It's a great kinetic bow, and honestly, it's going to do you. Uh, um, it's going to do you really well. It won't do you as good as what Wish Energy would do, but it's a good replacement if you wanted to use, say, an exotic energy or heavy. So that's one of your best kinetic bows to do to use. We've got Bite and Winds, which has been a fan favorite for people for many years. It took me three years. Almost three years to get a rapid hit explosive head biting winds. That is crazy to me. It took so long. This stat roll I've got with a nice accuracy stat because remember, accuracy increases range on bows, it increases target acquisition at a longer distance. And I've already done the testing on that in previous videos to show you that. Biting winds, I don't expect people to have it. It's probably fell out of your vault. So I'm not suggesting it too much, but if you've got one, have a look at the roll that you've got on it. Explosive head is highly recommended though because explosive head means that you just do more damage without having to activate anything. Explosive head just comes as it as you see it. You start activating as you shoot. Whispering slab. This is also a very old bow. Archer's temp or Vorpal weapon. Vorpal weapon is a 20% damage bonus. Whilst you do get 20% damage bonus, it's just not as good as doing stun damage to targets like explosive head. Explosive head works on all enemy types in the game. Vorpal weapon only works on bosses and champs and mages. It doesn't work on miners. So bear that in mind. Whispering Slab, I don't expect to really have it. I'm not highly recommending it, but I am saying if you've got one, have a look and maybe try it out. But an explosive head bow is going to do you far better. Moving on to energy bows. We've got Under Your Skin, Strident Whistle, Arsenic, Arsenic Bite, uh, Tyranny of Heaven, Wolf Tone Draw, Tripwire Canary. So the craftable bows in this slot 
Right. First and foremost, under your skin. Arches Tempo Explosive Head, the same as the Feltar, is it all the same situation? A fantastic void bow. Now, there's going to be a void weapon build next season where you can make elemental orbs. So I'll be looking at using this in a GM with barrier champs, especially for the void surgeon stuff. So you need to have all elements of bows as well. You can't just stick to that. I'm only using this one. No, you need void arc solar. And there is a void arc and solar variant of bows. So under your skin, it's an amazing bow, and it's a precision frame. What you're going to understand is they have a high accuracy star 86, makes it more reliable at range. Strident Whistle is a fantastic bow. It's just the solar variant of, of under your skin, really. And I've got Archer's Tempo Explosive Head. I've got Archer's Tempo Vorpal to auto swap to incandescent. So I've got loads of options. I've even got another roll down here. Shoot to Loot Explosive Head. Loads of different rolls on Strident Whistle. I highly recommend the bow. Arsenic by, as you know, one of my favorite bows in the game, especially the Dragonfly Explosive Head variant, um, which people do say that they uh, conflict, that the Explosive Head negates Dragonfly from proccing, which is true, but honestly, the times that happen is very rare. For the most part, it works as intended. You'll get a Dragonfly kill. There's countless hours of me playing with the bow on my videos. If you don't believe me, go and watch some footage. It's fantastic. And if you if you don't want that, then you've got the Rampage Explosive one, which Explosive Head and Rampage stacks together. So you're doing huge damage with the double damage perk that you get on that roll. Look at your rolls for Arsenic Bite, one of the best bows in the game. Tyranny of Heaven, it's a last wish weapon. It's actually now craftable, which I haven't done. Moving Target Explosive Head, I've got it, but I've got many better Strident Whistles than this. However, the crafted version of the gun, of the bow, sorry, is fantastic. There's a lot of different uh, combinations you can pull off with it, so craft a Tyranny of Heaven if you want, if you wish. Tripwire Canary is basically a craftable version of Arsenic Bite, which makes it slightly better, because you can kind of do what you want, because it's a lightweight frame bow, which has low intrinsic accuracy, but you can make its accuracy be a little bit higher, and you can do what you want with the weapon. It's fantastic. I've got it. I recommend that one as well. Wolf Tone Draws, I don't recommend. I've got them just for collections purposes with Frenzy and Shooter and stuff. But really, you're not going to be really using that. I don't see many people with a Wolf Tone Draw in their vaults. But check your rolls, I suppose. So now we go to the next column. Right, Unstoppable Scout. I'm not going to talk about this too much. I'm just going to give you my thoughts as it comes to me. So, scout rifles, well, covering the exotic scout rifles first, the kinetic slot. So, we've got DMT, right? We've got Dead Man's Tail. Dead Man's Tail, when it first launched, was fantastic. Even in PvE, it was. At the minute, right now, it's okay. What you need to understand is it's unstoppable scout. So, your scout doesn't really matter because you're going to stun the scout. You're going to stun the champ with your scout and then swap to your heavy. <laughs> so, Dead Man's Tail's all right. It, have a look at your rolls. I've got a fourth time to charm roll and a Vorpal roll, but honestly, I don't really recommend Dead Man's Tail. There's a lot of other better options, to be honest. Um, but it has got that damage with the uh, the cranial spike and stuff, but I haven't used it that long to give you a good educated opinion on it as it is right now because there's been a lot of changes with the weapon. But if you want to try it out, try it out. Other Exotic Scouts, Wicked Implement. I haven't got the cart list really to tell you too much about it, but it's going to get a headstone next season, so it's going to be getting a load of buff. I've told you in the past, Wicked Implement is like Outbreak Perfected. The more people that have it, the better it is. But playing solo, it's not as good. It can stun all three types of champions. I've proved that in a video. But it, it, it doesn't hit hard enough. We'll see what it's like next season. Keep, keep an eye on it, but you need the cart list at the very least, which I haven't got. Over exotic scout rifles, so in the energy slot, Skyburner's Oath and Polaris Lance. Both fantastic weapons because they're doing additional like scorch and ignition damage because they change that with Solar 3.0. Skyburner's Oath in particular is fantastic and if Proven Grounds is in the GM rotation, then a Dawn Chorus style Warlock is fantastic in that, but it is quite niche. But I will say, if you get the Skyburner's Oath build going, it's fantastic. Flatus Lance is also fantastic because you, you infinitely reload the weapon. It demolishes champs, whether it be Overload Scout, Barrier Scout, Unstoppable Scout, it doesn't matter. It's fantastic on all of them. Preferably you want Overload Scout, but it's not up this season, I'm afraid. So you might not want to have to put on this uh, Scout. It just depends on the GM that you're doing. Symmetry is final, uh, the final one. 
Now, Symmetry, I just don't value it as much as Polaris Lance and Skybend and Zorf. So I don't really recommend it that much, but there is a build around it, and it, it does do... It converts the gun into an alt fire mode where it shoots a massive pulse nade type thing, uh, and it melts barriers. It melts it melts champs. Well, it would melt barriers if we had anti barrier scout, but we don't. It's unstoppable scout, so it doesn't matter about this gun, and it doesn't hit hard enough for me because of its um, 260 RPM. So I don't really recommend symmetry. However, there is <coughs> some utility to the weapon, but I don't think it's worth it really. So moving on to legendary scouts, I'm not going to say, all I'm going to say is the same thing um, said in the past. Explosive head's going to be king for them. Or kinetic tremors is a worth no, not perk. Kinetic tremors, which is comes on uh, Nameless Midnight and other weapons. But Nameless Midnight is a fantastic weapon for Unstoppable Champions, and I have used it in the past. So that's a recommendation. I've got a, I've got a fantastic transfiguration with demo and explosive payload. So that's going to obviously be decent for me. But like I say, I'm not going to cover, cover too much on the scouts. The usual contenders like Nightwatch, Hung Jury, Servant Leader, uh, Tears of Contrition, which is craftable if you've got that pattern, is a fantastic laser beam of a scout. I recommend you craft it if you want. But generally, like your Hung Juries and your Nameless Midnights are going to be enough for the job just to stun and start. Well, that is all you're doing. So moving on to Energy weapons energy scouts doom of chelchus is literally one of the best energy element scouts in the game right i highly recommend that you um use this weapon so it's just really consistent see what you're going to understand with scout rifles is the lower the range start the less effective they are at range so a higher rate of fire scout will be less consistent at longer distances and this is true people think oh it's a scout it has good range range does effect drop off quite rapidly uh so i recommend like the 180 rpms down 200 rpms good as well like night watch is notably fantastic but anything anything quicker than that is a little bit of a water rifle all right so doom of chelchis tarnished metals craftable as well I, I recommend that which doesn't hit as hard as doom but it's nice aisha's embrace there's some good rules on that it's a trials of osiris weapon Vision of Confluence, uh, Vouchsurf is fantastic from Dream and City with Explosive Head. Stracato, there's lots of massive, uh, really good rolls on that. Um, long Arm from the Spiral Watcher Dungeon, if you get an Explosive Head one, then it's fantastic. Well, Explosive Payloads, are, it's fantastic. Point Inquiry was fantastic for barriers, but it's not up, it's just unstoppable, so the power of that goes down. Trust is a fantastic weapon as well, um, but literally, it doesn't really matter too much what scout rifles you use. So the next mod is um, Overload Hand Cannon. So this is the big one. Hand Cannons are getting some huge buffs next season. 20% increase to minor enemies and 75% to orange bars. So the first thing I'm thinking about it with Hand Cannons is that Overload Hand Cannon is a fantastic mod, especially when you get an explosive payload weapon. Or use an exotic primary hand cannon. For example, we've got Malfeasance. So Malfeasance, if you pair that with Lucky Pants, it does incredible amount of damage. To be honest with you, even if you don't, even if you use this weapon on a Warlock or a Titan, you are you are melting enemies. Now it's got unstoppable intrinsically. Does it mean it's going to get overload and in, and unstoppable? The answer will be no. This has never happened ever. So it will just, it will just work for overloads. But the thing is, you can melt down a barrier before they put the shield up after the first stun, especially with the Lucky Pants build. So Malfeasance is going to be one of the most powerful hand cannons in the game. End of. Hawk Moon's fantastic. People overlook Hawk Moon in PVE. It has the paracausal shot, which does huge damage. Right? It, it relies on a high skill. You got to get your crits. But again, if you pair this with Lucky Pants on a hunter, it's going to melt champs. Ace of Spades, it's a gun that's forgotten about from Forsaken. It is a decent gun with the Memento Mori, and you have got a bit of utility. You've got like an enhanced Firefly on it. It's not like a standard Firefly on, on that weapon. It's a good weapon. It's decent, but I think there are, there are better options. Fawns, another one. If you pair that with Necrotic Grips, you get your poison damage upped. It's a fantastic gun, and it will melt overloads because I've used it in the past. Sturm, I haven't used that weapon in the in, in ages, so I can't comment on the gun really as it is right now. Exotic 
Um, energy hand cannons. Sunshot's notable. Fantastic for air clear and stuff. It's just a fantastic weapon. Synergizes with solar 3.0 builds really well. Um, and Ariana's Vow is a notable one as well. Because it's got barrier intrinsically. Right, which means it won't work with Overload. But it is good. Um, but the Wish Ender, Arbalest, stuff like that outclass the weapon. Ariana's is good, and I imagine it would be even better with Lucky Pants, but overall, like, there are better options, but it is noted that Ariana's Vow is still decent, just not as good as other things. So moving on to Legendary Hand Cannons, so we've got Kinetic Energy. So Kinetic One's notable to look at. Vaporing is a big one for me, which I'm going to be using as soon as I can. I've got Explosive Head Frenzy Roll. These two stack together, so you're going to melt champs with Overload Hand Cannon. Um, with these two packs, because the the explosive payload is going to make it more consistent to keep a stun on an overload. So, Fairbring is a big one. Officer Revolver, Seven Seraph Officer Revolver, which is now in the Spider of the Watcher loop pool. I've got a re reconstruction, redirection roll, which is fantastic because it overloads the hand cannon massively. I can't remember, it might be 30 bullets. It goes up to like 30 bullets. So, this roll I'm looking out for and going to be using. Um, next season i've got an og drop mag explosive uh, uh sorry time payload version which time payload's different to explosive payload because it, it it there's a short delay so it actually stuns the enemy twice in some sort of um, respect it's hard to explain what it does compared to explosive payload but you'll see visually the difference time payload's actually a superior perk to explosive payload because of that short delay that it does Fantastic, so I'll be using that. And it's a 180 RPM. So with full auto, if you turn the full auto option on D2, you, you're stunning champs really well. This is a, a fantastic weapon. Even though you can't generate war mine cells, it doesn't matter. It's fantastic. Another weapon, True Prophecy, I've got Drop Mag, which you can't get anymore. Overload, overflow and Time Payload. For the same reasons I've said previously, that'll be a good weapon, but I don't expect for people to have it. Zer has sold it many times, though. And I, I think you might be selling it this week. I'm not sure. Our stringer is craftable, and this is based around you having more grenades. I've got a triple tap enhanced demo our stringer, which our stringer is fantastic weapon. It's just it's a shame it doesn't have explosive, but it is a really accurate weapon and a fun weapon to use. We've got DFA time payload, same reason. Dire promise and osmosis triple tap high cal hand cannon, which used to be my like pre 2019 hand cannon. Awesome hand cannon. I kept it all this time. Aeus Luna's good. I've got an Outlaw Kill Clip roll. I haven't got the Headstone roll. Well, I've had it in the past loads of times, but I don't really value Stasis weapons that much to have kept it, so I've probably deleted it in the past. But Aeus Luna is a good gun. It's just it sacrifices the 10% damage bonus, so remember this. And there's no explosive payload on the weapon. Vel Vulpecula is a very rare hand cannon. I don't expect people to have it, but it, it is basically a worse version <coughs> of the Officer Revolver. So... I don't recommend it over Officer Revolver, but if you haven't got Revolver and you've got this, then you can use it. As long as it's got Explosive Head, it'll do okay. <clears throat> so, Energy Hand Cannons. So, Cantata-57 is a fantastic hand cannon because it's arc. Um, so, we're going to be able to st st stun champions very easily and it'll dip into the arc surge when that's up and stuff like this. So, Time Payload plus Rapid Hit. It's fantastic, one of the best weapons. One kinetic hand cannon I did miss. I've got this one, a explosive firefly. I've also got a demo adrenaline junkie judgment. It's a very unique role, but I do recommend you get it with time payload instead. This gun, this gun is fantastic, based around your grenade quite a lot. But judgment's a really good hand cannon, but I think it's better with the time payload, which I do not have. Have a look at your rolls on it. Moving on, another arc hand cannon, 120 RPM, time payload, flared mag wheel, combined action, fantastic. I love the gun model as well, so I've kept it for that reason. It's going to be a, a very useful hand cannon if I want to use an arc. Probably not as good as um, Cantata, but still good. So, the solar hand cannon integra integra integration, right, Got stats for, stats for all and incandescent. This is a fixed roll with interchangeable perks that you get from a quest of recent times. So I recommend this gun. It's fantastic. It is. It lacks explosive payload, but it is a fantastic gun. Very good stats, right? So 
targeted reduction probably the best void energy hand cannon that we have or one of the best and you can craft it which i have just done that with outlaw and enhanced explosive head i recommend that you craft this as soon as possible before this season ends because this hand cannon is really good especially the fact it's got explosive payload bottom dollar is a similar version to the gun just not quite as good and bottom dollar is quite rare of a gun as well most people don't hold on to that gun so i don't expect you to have it annual skate a solar variant of what we've just seen uh, of, of like the cantata and the, the targeted reduction just a solar variant time payload outlaw fantastic gun nation of the beast which is now craftable i've got the original version drop mag outlaw explosive head which is fantastic one of the best arcane cannons in the game hands down and you know if you haven't got it then go and craft it or whatever if you've got the pattern Palindrome, Palindrome's okay, but it, I feel as though Palindrome's more PvP based. It's got no explosive head on it, but it does feel nice to use in GMs, and I have done it before. But the other void hand cannon I just mentioned before is superior to this one. So that's hand cannons covered. The key note to take away from it is that explosive head is explosive payload is king for overload champions on a hand cannon. Unstoppable fusion next. I'll we'll speed up a little bit here because I don't want to go too. Um, long so when i'm thinking about this i'm thinking unstoppable fusion means that you can mess around with 1k voices that was my first thought so this isn't a meta thing or anything but it just means that you'll be able to use 1000 voices in end game content but the problem with it is that the ammo of the gun isn't very good so i'm not recommending it it's just the, my first thought when i saw this I was like oh i can use uh, unstoppable 1000 voices which is more novelty than anything, and it wouldn't be that good without particle deconstruction. It isn't uh, any time was poor. So, to the kinetic slot. So, Bastion has intrinsic unstoppable champion to it. So, this won't affect it at all. Bastion's a waste of an exotic slot, and I wouldn't recommend it in endgame. I've done solar GMs with it, and it works as you would think, not, not adding really much, and it's actually. A distraction because it takes your exotic slot away so i wouldn't recommend it riptide is the best fusion rifle in the game in the kinetic slot right now even though it's stasis and it does 10 percent less it doesn't matter it's got a little perk called chill clip chill clip allows you to stun all three champions anyways as it is right now so it's in, it's got only going to be even more consistent right when you have unstoppable fusion because you'll get stunned on the first shot as opposed to the second so it's going to make it even more consistent. So make sure that you've got your Riptide. Riptide's a rapid fire frame fusion, which makes them the best fusions in the game. So like if you've got like a high impact frame or a precision frame fusion, these types of fusions will never be as good as Riptide until they make the change, if they ever do. This fusion rifle here, this Stasis 1 Oven Drill FR FR6, does come with chill clip, right? But it's too slow, really. That might change a little bit because you've got unstoppable fusion anyways but riptide's still going to out dps this other stasis fusion that we have and we've got obviously the vow of the disciple one which again is the wrong archetype it, it ain't competing with, with no riptide moving on to energy fusion rifles the first four that i had was kytis and coordinate which is a vorpal slideways solar fusion the one i've got anyways which is a 15 percent damage bonus on special weapons and it just means that I'm going to be able to melt champions quicker. This is going to be a top pick whenever there's solar surges and stuff like that. Um, just a fantastic weapon all around. One of the best fusions in the game. And it's a rapid fire frame fusion as well. Another fusion that came to my attention lately was Loaded Question, the Adept version. Because I've got Control Burst on it. Control Burst gives you a 20% increased damage when you hit all your bolts. It also decreases charge time, but... This rule that I've got all on horse to control burst is going to make it really good, actually, not bad. It's the wrong archetype because it's high impact frame, which is inherently worse than a rapid fire, but it's still a decent fusion. The better variant of that weapon, well, kind of, is iterative loop because it is an arc fusion, right, which is craftable, which I haven't crafted yet, but Neo Mooner weapons are going to be easier to farm next season. So you want to do that. Right, which I am going to do as well. The problem with the weapon is it doesn't really come with any damage bonuses. Vault Shot is a damage bonus technically, but there's a more, little bit more of a setup for that. 
It's got demo, which is nice, lead from gold, which is nice. There's a couple of different roles on it, but it's more the use of the weapon that's more appealing, not so much its perk pill as much. It is a fantastic weapon, there's no doubt about it. There's another arc fusion, which plug one, which I've got reservoir burst on it. It's a good weapon, it's all right, but the fusions I've mentioned previously are better than this one. Um, I have another loaded question here, all on horse to frenzy, just a different variant of the gun. Other fusions, I mean, there's Techie on Force right now, the one we control Burst, that's going to be fantastic. But other than that, I don't really recommend any other fusions, because all the other fusions are, uh, are just not as good as a Rapid Fire Frame. There is no Composure, and don't forget about this weapon, because it's got Fear and Frenzy High Impact Reserves, and it's Rapid Fire Frame, and it's a Void Variant. There is Lightly Suspect, which can be craftable, but it's not as good as no co Composure, even though you can craft it. Epicurean is the same failings. Its purple is terrible. Therefore, you wouldn't really use it in PvE over no Composure. So th those are my Fusion Rifle recommendations. There is Exotics, just to cover finally the Energy ones. So we've got Merciless, one of the highest DPS weapons in the game. So you're going to see people be using this in GMs, and I certainly will as well. With the changes that they've made to the weapon, it's fantastic. Delicate Tomb is a new arc exotic. It's not that good. There's better versions than this. For example, Telesto. Telesto's a, a really monster of a weapon, especially if we do unstoppable fusion. So that's gonna you're gonna see the usability of that go up. Plus Jatun, right? Now Jatun's good because it has the track and shot. So you can stun an unstoppable from meters. Like you could stun an unstoppable technically from like 80, 90 meters away if you wanted to. That scenario might not come up. But a 50 40 meter unstoppable champ might come up. Your turn's fantastic and it blinds enemies. So if you're up against solar wizards and stuff like this, like, like in Lake of Shadows, it's fantastic. Your turn's a, a great weapon, so you want to be using that. Uh, and really, that's the fusion rifles covered. So I've covered all of that. So now just moving on to the rest of the table. I'm not going to cover Arc and Strand Siphon combo. We've seen this before. This is a Solar Strand version, Void Strand version. That's fine. Urgent Perk Specialization greatly improves the benefits provided by the Heat Rush, Nanotrek, Tracer Rockets, Unsated Hunger. It's nothing we haven't seen before. It's just an Origin Trait Perk. We usually get these. Divine is discount. All Scavenger mods are discounted. This is fantastic because they are nerfing the amount of drops of heavy you get when you run double special. So you want to be always running scavenger mods when you do an end game content. So this is going to be fantastic. It's going to it's going to help build crafting on your boots. Strand weapon farm blows have a chance to generate a tangle. This um, fanatic tangle perk, whatever it's called, this is fine. But I've just already stated when you use a strand weapon, you get less damage. The only strand weapon you really really want to be using in the kinetic slot, at least, would be Quicksilver Storm. So I don't value this too much. Origin perk, it's the same sort of thing that we've seen, but I will say that this was buggy this season, where it would overcharge the weapons. It wasn't working with everything. So these perks are funky. We'll have to see. But I generally don't run these perks anyways, because they're usually on the helmet and all that stuff, so I don't, I don't usually run them. Element lobs. So these are the big change. There's going to be Void, Arc, and Solar variant, and it states, while using a Void subclass and a Void weapon, Final blows have a chance to spawn the elemental orb, which then makes vol uh, targets volatile. Right, the arc one volt, the arc one does a jolt, and the solar one scorches. So there's going to be some build crafting re regarding around elemental orbs, which are single, uh, uh, similar to tangles. Overload LMG. Right, the first thing I think about when I think about this is Thunderlord. Thunderlord already has overload L LMG, so it, it makes it best in slot for that. Generally speaking. But the next best in slot weapon that has actually maybe more damage, total damage, is Grand Overture. So you might want to start using Grand Overture next season because of this mod. And Grand Overture is a fantastic weapon, and I've already stated in the past on why it is. So yeah, Overload Machine Gun's nice. It frees up mods, it frees up weapons in your other slots. So it might mean that you don't need to use a hand cannon because you've got Overload LMG. So therefore, you, oh, you might want to double up on our Overlord. Sometimes that's useful. Just depends. Elemental Fury. While stunned champions take bonus damage from your abilities in Elemental Orb damage. This is insane. So say you're on a Solar Bonk Titan. Say you're on an um, Arc Warlock. Getting ability damage boost to champs is always handy on ability-based builds. 
The communal pickups, I'm not going to cover this. This is team based stuff. I'm not bothered too much. Refreshing pickups, you get ability energy for your least powered ability. We've seen perks like this in the past. That's going to be good, but that's revolving around elemental orbs or tangled. This is the big mod of the of the season, right, for solo play. Semi or, or striker. If you have fewer than two stacks of armor charge, rapid precision shots with bows, snipers, and scout rifles generate an armor charge. This is huge for this. Imagine you're firing your Lamon Arc or your Wish Enderer in the back of the map, doing damage to a target. You're going to get the two stacks of armor charge, which can then proc surges on your boots. So put surges on your boots, you get surges for free, thus buffing your weapons. Now, you already get overcharged weapons and surges in GMs, but they're, they're sort of bugging right now, and you've still got to put surges on. They've addressed that a little bit, but they're still not quite clear. They're saying that there's some bugs already with what we're actually already getting. The bugs have came out before the seasons came out, but I would argue it's already bugged anyways right now. People are using surges to overcharge the weapon anyways without relying on those mods. I'm just saying that's a fantastic mod that's going to proc when you're at range. Monochromatic Maestro Dealer element, Elemental Ability Damage increases matching weapon damage, and Elemental Weapon Damage increases matching ability damage, so it's a one for one. Right, now Fortress, the Exotic Helmet's going to get this anyways, or a version of it. I can't remember exactly what it does, but it's something similar to this. it will be interesting to see if this stacks with that, I don't know. it be interesting to see if it does. But yeah, that's a good ability, it's not bad. Rapid Fire Ranger, this is a much better one and versatile one. Rapid Precision Hits made from long range, weak in the target. This is Sunder and Glare. It's going to debuff enemies by 20%. Providing they keep the debuff percentage the same, this is a fantastic weapon uh, mod for weapons. Elemental Embrace, subclass elemental buffs grant, your, grant you bonus recovery and damage resistance against combatant attacks in the matching element, elemental type. How much is the resistance? If it's a sizable amount, it might be worth running it. Elemental mun munitions, combatant final blows with tangles or elemental orbs have a chance to drop special or heavy. By how much? If it's a lot, it's worth running it. If the mod is inconsistent, it won't be worth running. Because remember, you can only pick two mods in this final column. Frenzied stacks, your armor charges grant bonus damage to your front tangles or elemental orbs. Your armor charge now decays over time. This is going to conflict with semi auto striker because semi auto striker, as I said previously, is going to give you a surge for free. Right? If you then throw an orb, you lose a stack. Now, when you throw the orb, if it's a massive explosion and it's really worth doing, then it's worth it. But it just depends by how much. We need a percentage. There isn't one. I would say that Frenzy Stacks is actually a worse mod. It's gonna cut it's gonna conflict with semi auto striker, which would then conflict with the surge build. That was my take on the season twenty two artifact mods. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.